A private U.S. company will make an attempt at a historic moon landing this afternoon. If successful, Texas-based Intuitive Machines would become the first private company in the world to put a lander on the moon. It would also mark the first time that the U.S. has landed on the lunar surface since Apollo 17 in 1972. One. The spacecraft, called Odysseus, lifted off from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida on February 15th. After traveling a mere 620,000 miles, it's expected to land near the lunar south pole at roughly 4.30 p.m. Eastern time. CBS News space analyst Bill Harwood is with us for a preview of what we can expect to see today. Bill, you know how excited I get about all space stories. <laughs> Let's just start off by explaining yep. to our viewers what needs to happen for Odysseus to make a successful touchdown. Well, as you said, they took off about a week ago. They've gotten into lunar orbit. They did that yesterday. So now the goal is to drop down from an altitude of about 60 miles to a point just over the landing site, which is only 180 miles from the moon's south pole. And then the spacecraft's going to flip up part, uh, vertically and descend straight down to the surface. The whole process is going to take about an hour. Um, and, you know, it's, it, everything has to go well. You know, it's, it's the old saying, you know, only one thing has to fail to stop something like this. So fingers crossed that they can pull this off. Well, and on that note, Bill, you know, in the last year, there have been two other attempts at lunar landings that were unsuccessful. Uh, why is it so difficult uh, to land on the lunar surface, especially yeah. given that we've, we've done it before? Um, and why does Intuitive think that their spacecraft will succeed? Well, first of all, you know, I blame all this on Han Solo and Star Wars because <laughs> that movie think made so everybody easy. think space travels. <laughs> yeah, it's so easy, right? You know, go to light speed. Well, the simple fact is it's not easy. It's extremely difficult for even governments to do this. You know, there have only been five countries in the world that have ever pulled it off. Uh, and as you say, this is the fourth attempt by a, a privately built lander to reach the surface. The, the preceding three all failed. Uh, but it's very difficult. It's very complicated. And, of course, these companies don't have the limitless budgets that an agency like NASA has, you know, to perfect every little system and test it, you know, ad infinitum to make sure it's going to work right. So there is a heightened risk with it. But if they can pull this off, it's really going to open the door, I think, to more low-cost exploration of the moon, and, and that's, that's NASA's goal, to encourage that very thing. Well, we do these things not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Right, Bill? Uh, so talk to us about what, what, if successful, today's landing might mean for the future of space exploration. And it's probably worth noting, as Bill and I are talking about this, that this is an unmanned uh, space uh, craft. And, oh, yeah. and, it's, it's yeah. pro and, you know, we're aware of that, but uh, we're still kind of a ways away from humans returning to the moon. But that's potentially on the horizon, right, Bill? That's exactly right. You know, this renewed interest in putting landers on the moon and eventually astronauts is because there's, there's a bit of evidence that there could be ice near the south pole of the moon, which, it, which future astronauts could mine. You know, you can turn ice into water and air and rocket fuel, uh, so that could greatly reduce the cost of deep space exploration. Uh, this mission, uh, the, 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 the lander by Intuitive Machines, is one in a series that NASA is partially funding. In other words, they're putting the science instruments on board and paying for the transportation, all as a lead-up to the Artemis program, which is the one, as you mentioned, it's going to send astronauts to the moon, presumably in the 2026-2027 time frame. So these are precursor missions. And if they all work out, you know, NASA plans to basically hire these companies to send payloads to the moon like, like you'd call an Uber or a Lyft, you know, like, take this payload to the moon, I'll pay you this much money to do it. But these companies have to make it work first, and that's what we're seeing today. I love that imagery of, of just calling an Uber, a space Uber. All right, Bill Harwood, thank you. Sure thing.